Hey YouTube, here's Heiko. Today in my garage, what are we working on today, you might ask. Uh, we are working on the starter of my 1974 R90-6. Uh, I've had a slow cranking kind of a problem on this bike for a little while. When I first got it, put it back together, it was cranking just fine and then over time it just got slower and slower and slower. I've, uh, you know, I always like to go from cheap to expensive repairs. So I started with the inexpensive things like uh, battery cables, then I replaced the starter solenoid, correction, the starter relay. Um, the bike has a brand new main wiring harness, so nothing is old there, none of the connectors are old. None of the wiring inside the headlight bucket is old. So I've worked through all the little troubleshooting tricks. Um, I, I can't think of anything other than the starter so we're now looking uh, at the starter i actually have two the one that's in the bike and a spare that came when i bought the bike so it came in a box it's pretty rusty but uh, i tested it with uh, my little jump start pack here it still spins so i'm in the process of taking that apart and just taking a look at it so i'll take you along so starter sits right under this cover here and it is kind of a pain in the neck to take that out. Make sure, oops, it's the wrong size. Make sure you have your battery disconnected. There's too much wiring. Currently, my front cover here is off too. So you always have to make sure you disconnect your battery before you do any of this. So this one here, you have to... pretty much remove your L filter housing because it kind of clamps this top cover in place. But I'm taking out the, the two Allen heads here first. Um, air filter housing. I'm going to take the hose clamps off the intake. I always try to do as little as possible to get to it, but oftentimes it's just easier if you just yank it all apart. It takes less time. So the the long bolt from the air filter housing comes out and then the, the air intake boots have to come off. Maybe, maybe if I take it. Uh, if you loosen up your carburetors, I can't see. So if you loosen up your carburetors, since they also, the front end sits in a rubber boot that gives you a little bit flexibility here. And then it is a little easier to get the intake boots off. So that's that. And then I usually just stick the cord back in and tighten them up so they don't fall. No. So, big bolt out of here. Where's my timing hole rubber plug? Here we go. Let's put that back in there before we lose it. I'm surprised it hasn't come out while riding. So, that is loose. Now, let's do the intake on the other side. That's pretty much exactly the same. Just take the Post cleans loose. There we go. We go the carb. And there we go. So air intakes are off. Carburetor gets secured. And 
like so. And uh, if you ever notice that on the right hand side of the engine, you have a little bit of a drop of oil in your air intake. That's normal because you have the crank share, the crankcase breather uh, valve up under the cover, which I'm going to show you. And that uh, vents into the right side air intake, at least on this model. Um, it's possible that on newer models, different years, they changed that a little bit. All right, here's our air filter. Let's take that out. There we go. Put that over here. Safe location. Choke cables. These are those solid type choke cables. I really am a little concerned. Always letting this hang here like this. That one day I'm going to bend them and then they don't work anymore. And then, yeah, and then we go from there. All right, now we need a 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter wrench. 12. So in, in here, let me show you. So in there, the other half is secured with this nut down there, and it's not a 13, it's a 12. I guess they had to go with that size because it's a pretty tight spot there. Here you can see the, the breather and the tube that goes into the right side air intake. All right. No, we're taking out this 12 millimeter nut out, but loose 12 millimeter nut. Just lose a couple turns so we can take the other side of the air filter housing off. And that's the, this dangle here. We should be able to wiggle this out. Remember your fuel lines, they're always in the way. There's always something in the way. Here's the ground cable. Come on. What's the challenge here? Why are we sticking? Oh, yeah, your uh, my breather hose is of course now being difficult. You need to pull the breather, breather hose right off of the um, breather valve, the PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation. Is that what it is? Or positive pressure crankcase ventilation. Oh, let me grab it from the other side. Yeah, you have to pull it right off of that breather valve or else you can't get the air filter housing off really well. I have the newer version of this breather valve in there, which is a reed valve. The older ones were like a spring-loaded flapper, and that would make the, what do they call it, the turkey fart or the turkey noise. Come on. There you go. There you go. There's the hose. The tube goes right in there. So that needs to be out of the way. Put that over here. All right, and now we have the air filter housing out of the way, which is kind of annoying that we even have to do this. Then my little Optima 0108. Um, I'm using M3 double-sided mounting tape and it usually is relatively easy to remove and then I just have to redo the tape afterwards no problem maybe one day I'm fine uh, I will find it a little bit more permanent mounting solution spark plug wire out of the way this one here
and this cover will only come off this yeah maybe if you have everything removed you can pull it out the other way but uh there you go cover off put that out of the way and let's move you guys over where you can see the starter a little better there you go and now we're going to yank the here's the breather valve this is the new version with a reed valve in there you know what and the wiring here why is it behind my choke cable that's the question i have that's kind of annoying i might have to address that when we put that back together uh 13 millimeter right over here that's for the battery cable so the um there are big old bolts sticking out of the solenoid here Uh, different years have different wiring harnesses and if you look at your wiring schematic they might look different here in this case there's actually a, a positive wire coming from the diode board that also goes to the bolt here where the big old 12 volt uh, battery cable is connected to don't drop anything there we go so here's a this is a diode board ring terminal and then this is the battery cable positive that goes through this little grommet up here and runs back to the positive of the battery so now i'm going to put the lock washer and the nut right back on there so we're not losing parts hopefully not dropping it into into here and then over here is a, a spade connector that is um, cable coming from your starter switch pretty much that actually makes this tick here all right and then it's kind of annoying there are two bolts here on this I really need to get a better tripod and a different camera. I just I just can't justify spending money on this. Sorry guys. Alright, get this out. Yes. Yeah, I wonder there should probably be a washer on the other side. I mean running a steel nut against a cast aluminum piece with no washer in between i would say there's a washer missing you guys correct me if i'm wrong all right let's do the other side It's much better. And my 13 on there. Um, these are SK wrenches made in the US. I really like them. 
Um, the box end is nice and skinny, so whenever I have a hard time getting any other box wrench in into a location, usually my SK wrenches, they work. Okay, so let's wrench out of the way. And these uh, shoulder nuts here, they're definitely not locking, so I would say there should be definitely a wave washer at least. I'll look at some parts fish later. Fitch, fish, fish. All right, now we have that off. And now I'll show you the other bolt. So you can only take the starter out if you have your front cover off. Let's turn the light on. See that little puppy there? That one. That's the third bolt holding the starter in. Um, yeah, so you literally have to have the front cover off. And uh, that's a 10 millimeter socket. You know, when I first moved to the States, left all the tools that I had in Germany behind uh, because I thought, oh, let's just start over. I'm kind of regretting this. There's still a basement room full of tools that I left behind. Uh, but I bought first socket set here, these color-coded ones, Power Built. It's really a cheap old Chinese brand. Tractor Supply carries Power Built, but these were uh, purchased at Costco. And um, they came in a in a set, uh, so normal size, 3 8 drive metric, normal length socket in standard, and then metric and standard deep sockets. And I still use them to this day, and they are really good, actually. I, I mean, I don't really care for the color coding, but... 3 8 drive is what I use the most. All right, I, I have all the wiring disconnected, so they're all just loosely dangling around here. And now we should be able to just, I hope, pull this up. We should. Well, what's the hold back here? Here we go. There you go. Start out. All right, let's go back to the bench. Uh, I decided to do one more thing before I uh, call it a day. Um, I want to test this starter, so I, I put it in my vise here. Uh, nothing should be in the way. The gear can spin freely down there. I have my starter pack. So remember the solenoid, we took one big wire off, right? That was the positive from the battery. So now we have the positive from my... Uh, battery pack then we had this number 50 uh, sp spade terminal there that's where your starter switch goes to or starter relay actually I think your switch switches the relay and then the relay gives juice to this and uh, ground just grounding the the housing here so now we're going to turn the my battery pack on, lights on, and now we should only have to touch the positive and the starter should jump into action. I mean, it sounds uh, okay. Let me park you somewhere else. I turn the battery off for now. Let's do this another orientation. Take this off for a second. I want to see the gear. All right, let's, um, how can we pinch this without pinching it? Okay, just the housing. Aluminum jaws, no big deal. You guys go over here. All right, now I'm going to hook this back up. Positive on the positive. A little 
jumper cable on the spade terminal. Okay. Battery pack back on. No. Oh. Ground is important. Ground on the ground or on anything metal on this thing, non painted metal. And there we go. Yeah, it looks like the bushing. Something sounds really dry. The, the bushing are grindy, grindy. Yeah. So this sounds pretty dry and worn. Uh, the brushes might not be bad. The bushings might not be bad. They might just be a little on the dry side. And that gives more resistance to this thing spinning when it's uh, supposed to start your motorcycle. Uh, everything counts, you know. Resistance of the electrical connections are important. They, they cause voltage loss and then your starter doesn't spin as fast. But if you have mechanical resistance in those bushings here, uh, you know, let's, let's just for the sake of playing around. I mean, I'm going to definitely rebuild it, but let's put some WD-40 on the bushing right there. And I'm going to take the backside off real quick. Here's a 10 millimeter. Because uh, this little cover that's held on uh, back here also had some grease in it. Oh, this doesn't fit it. Okay, so this. This uh, triangular bracket needs to come off. So I'm going to take that off real quick. And save all the nuts and washers. I know WD-40 is not a lubricant. But just to play around with it. Oh, here's very important. They have two washers on each stud here in the back, then the bracket, and then, you know what, I'm going to put that back on there, or else I'm just going to lose it. Um, so two washers, then the bracket, and then uh, a wave washer and a nut. I think I should be able to remember that with this triangular little thing here. And now we're just going to take this grease cover off. The, you know, it, it's not the bushing itself. It's just a cover over the end of the um, rotor. There we go. There's actually grease in here. <laughs> Interesting. And... The half moon thing and the little oh, just some W D40. Not sponsored by the way. I'm not saying that. It's just I like the non-aerosol can, the pump spray bottle. I use it for you know cleaning metal part and getting bolts loose. That's why it's kind of convenient. And you can buy big refill gallon canisters. All right, a uh, little bit of some WD-40 there. Now we're going to hook the battery back up. Now we have to find ourselves a different way of hooking the ground up. Let's do that here. And my little jumper right there on the spade connector. Battery on. And contact. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, um, the RPM is already much higher. Less resistance, but it's still squeaky in there. So, there's definitely some bushings uh, dry. Not worn. I don't see any wobble or anything. So, I wonder how much we would really have to do to make this a not-so-slow starter. Um, in my process of troubleshooting, I had already um, cleaned all the electrical connections uh, with a wire brush and put that back together. But yeah, I'm definitely going to first do my research which starter I will rebuild. One of those two will definitely get um, new parts.
pushings and brushes and springs. So, and until then, you guys take care.